This is Stephen Gilbreth with a video on how to do a live video stream under a plan B situation, which means we're using the Videoonics video switcher instead of using the TriCaster. This is a basic instruction on how to use the Videoonics. If you want advanced instruction, go to the advanced video under this basic instruction for the video switcher, which can also be called as the manufacturer does, a video mixer, synonymous term, video mixer, video switcher. We mean this unit by Videonics. And in this video, here's what we'll be telling you. We'll be telling you how to turn the unit on and off, where that button is. We'll be telling you about the top row of buttons, which are your hot buttons, A, B, C, D, and color. If you're in an emergency situation, just turn on that video onyx and press the button and you've got the camera source behind those buttons. We'll also be explaining to you how to do a fade and dissolve by setting up your next camera shot with these buttons at the bottom. And we'll also be explaining the video screen above to you, which is the preview screen. Let's go ahead and tilt up there because I'll just mention to you what we're going to be telling you on that. We'll be telling you how this preview screen lets you see all four of your video sources that you can select from. We'll be explaining how the top row above it lets you see from an indication which is the live video source. We'll be telling you how in the row below the preview for preview uh, video sources, how the row below that indicates what will become your next camera shot. Even though there's a lot of buttons here, we're only going to concern ourselves in this basic instruction with the top row, which is your immediate hot buttons to get you cut directly to a video source and get it on screen immediately. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, real simple. If you need to get a video source on the screen quick, just punch a button on the top row, A, B, C, or D. And then we'll explain how, again, like I said, how to set up the next shot that comes up after you press the play button. If you understand that, you can already do a dissolve if you've got dissolve punched up up here. Set up your next camera with your bottom row of buttons, press play, it dissolves to it. I mentioned to you at the beginning, we'd show you where the on off button is. Let's actually, let's start with that because if you don't have that button turned on, all those other buttons aren't going to do a thing in the world for you. We're going to go to this top bank of buttons. I mentioned to you these are your hot buttons. These immediately cut to a video source and put it on screen. Right now you can see we're on, we're on camera C. That's the camera that's now live that's showing you the video onyx buttons where my hand is. That's camera C and you notice above the button on the top row, above button C is a solid green light. That solid green light tells you, tells you which video source is going out to people. If I press button B right now, the camera B will come on the screen and a, the solid light will move over and hold above button B as long as I keep button B active. Let's press that. On the video onyx top bank of buttons above button B, the green light is now solid above button B while this camera shot is on camera B. Let's come back to camera C. I'm going to take C. Now the green light moved over to button C. It's holding solid above C, telling me that camera C is active. While we had camera B on, the solid green light was above B. Let's take, now we have camera A on my video onyx unit. In front of me, I see a solid green light above the A button, telling me that on your screen, you are seeing the output of this video onyx. You're seeing camera A. Let's come back again to camera C. I'm going to press the camera C button. The green light, solid green light, moved over to C. That's your top bank. It's your hot buttons. I press, you press a button up here, that camera source comes on. Again, you press camera A, boom, you see camera A. You press button B on that top bank, boom, you see camera B. You press button C on that top bank, boom, we come over to camera C. That's pretty simple. That's your most simple form of operating this, just cutting from one video source to another and it works very effectively, it works very simple. But you don't always want to cut. That's your top bank. Couldn't be more simple than that. Now you want to do something a little more fancy, you want to do a fade. That's going to require you to do a setup by 
pushing one of the buttons on the bottom row. And as soon as you push one of those buttons on the bottom row, the corresponding button on the top row will indicate you've pressed that button by flashing. The, the green light above it will flash. It won't be solid. So you see in this case, video source D is set up to be the next camera shot after we press the play button. The play button is at the bottom of the left column. We press that button it will now dissolve to camera D. Why will it dissolve to camera D? Because the last button that I pressed in this column was the fade dissolve button. It does nothing when you press it, it just simply tells the play button down below that's what we're going to do when you press play. It stays in this mode forever until you might press one of these other effect buttons. We'll never use wipe, never say never, but for church service, I don't know of any single camera shot that's going to look good in a wipe. There may be some rare exception. Maybe 1% of the time or a little less, we might use a zoom or a flip. We'll show you how these work in an advanced video. But for now, let me just say, for basic use, we won't use these. We're going to put it in fade dissolve mode. We're going to leave it in fade dissolve mode so that the button at the bottom of that column, the play button, every time you press that from here on out, it's going to do a fade dissolve because that's the last button up in the effects area that we pressed. The play button will dissolve to what you have set up by pressing one of the bottom buttons, A, B, C, D, or color. And as soon as you press one of those bottom buttons, it sets that up in the top with a flashing green light. Now, I don't want Video Source D to be the next camera shot we're going to dissolve to. I want camera A. So in the bottom bank, I'm simply going to press the A button. But when we press a button at the bottom, it sets up that camera to be the next camera shot. It indicates it to you with a flashing green light here. In your preview above, it indicates if I press the A button at the bottom bank of the Video Onyx mixer, notice the green light moved over to underneath Video Shot A. If I press the B button on the bottom of the Video Onyx, it moves over to B below the picture of B. So you got two ways to indicate what's going to be your next shot. Right now, next shot is camera B. It's flashing. If I change my mind, I want the next camera shot to be A. I press that A button at the bottom, and now the A column has the flashing green light at the top. That means when I press this play button, right now we're going to move from camera C to camera A with a dissolve. Let's press the play button, watch it dissolve. Nice clean dissolve to camera A. Press the play button again, we come back where we were to camera C. Let's say we want to now dissolve to camera B instead of camera A. Press the button at the bottom, that sets up camera B. We press the play button, we go from camera C that we're on now to camera B. Let's press the play button, and there goes our dissolve to camera B. A little more complicated than just hot pushing the buttons at the top bank to get a shot. We press camera A, go to camera A, press button B, we go to camera B, press button C, take C, we come to C. And it's that easy. Press the top button, you get that camera. You want to fade or dissolve to another shot, set it up on the bottom first, watch your flashing light to see where you're going to go. I want it to go to camera A next. Press the play button, it dissolves to camera A instead of cutting to camera A. Press the button again, we come back where we were. I hope that is understandable to you. If not, please watch the video again and set up your video onyx. Turn it on with that button in the upper left hand corner and watch this video again and actually do this on your video onyx while you watch this video if you're having any problem with it. The first time you run it, do it in very basic mode. Next time, watch the next video to understand how to do a chroma key. We'll explain that in the advanced plan B on how to use the Video Onyx video switcher. Before we close up, I'm just going to quickly set the chroma key lettering so that we uh, close out with the title on the screen. and press the play button, there's our title. We'll show you how to do the chroma key in the advanced. Stephen Gilbreth, until next time.